Neutrinos are just like light. The advantage is that even on light is that uh, it's not absorbed. Neutrinos reach us from the edge of the universe and any individual neutrino can come from you know the beginning of time, the beginning of the universe. We are moving into a region that has never been covered by any wavelength of astronomy, there is of course always room for surprise. Neutrinos are ghost particles, so they pass right through material without leaving any signs of their passage. They go through walls, they go through the earth, they come out of black holes. Of course, the critical thing is that they have no electric charge, so they are not bent by magnetic fields. So it has a memory, it tells you where it comes from. The problem is then you have to catch them. That one in a million neutrino that eventually stops in your detector, what it does is it interacts with the nucleus in the ice and it makes a little nuclear reaction. That nuclear reaction cre creates charged particles. And these charged particles emit blue light. And so from the light pattern left by that nuclear reaction made by one neutrino, we can reproduce its direction and its energy. So this is a humongous detector in a remote location, a telescope which does not observe light like other telescopes do, but an elusive ghost-like particle from the universe. We would love neutrinos which would have small labels saying, hi, I'm from the atmosphere and I'm cosmic. They do not do that. What we typically have been doing now is to look at events that are so energetic that they cannot be produced in the atmosphere. We just had two of these events, and two events are not approved. There is something there. And eventually we saw more of these huge events, and then we knew this is for real. Each measurement represents a dot in the sky. And so you can think of each neutrino as a dot on a digital map. And if you pile them up, you get a clearer and clearer map with higher and higher resolution. That's the idea. If we ask ourselves what processes in, in the universe are capable of creating particles at these enormous energies, we arrive at the conclusion that there's very few possibilities. Already now, with the first maps of the universe that we are making with IceCube, we may see uh, neutrinos originate from places that no photons escape. We are observing parts of the universe which are inaccessible to standard astronomy. We are now going to add more events to our present map. And so we'll have a better map and God knows what we will see. Could happen tomorrow, it may take the next generation detectors. So what we would like to do is to build an even larger ice cube, something on the order of 10 times larger. The bigger the detector uh, gets, the more neutrinos you see, and in fact, uh, the better you can measure their properties. So you not only get a bigger detector, you get a better detector. There we will get the answer. Well, IceCube is one of the craziest projects uh, in physics, probably in all the science that I, I know. You come to IceCube for science and you stay for the people. The collaboration now consists of uh, about 50 institutions uh, and more than 300 people. We do everything from searching for the highest energy sources out in the universe, and then we can go down to very low energies, we can look for uh, the physics of neutrinos themselves, we can search for dark matter. Working with IceCube and neutrino physics in general mean that you're really working in the forefront of research. We opened a window but we opened it only for a small slit and we want to fully open it. We want to chart the landscape. To learn something which no one has learned of before. To see 
properties of the universe which no one has ever studied before. I think it's the excitement of this, of this field. Without understanding neutrinos, we will never understand the universe.